Jamare. The fuck? Alright, let's go. Six seconds. So at this point, it has been almost six years since the whole influencer box boxing thing was really at its inception with Logan Paul fighting KSI and his little brother Jake beating up on Deji. Since then most of these guys have done these boxing events as more of a side gig where they really lock in for a couple of months in anticipation of the event but for the most part are still mainly focused on their brand or their business or really being more of an influencer. But a couple of these YouTubers have leaned all the way into the boxing lifestyle, like this dude Salt Poppy, Gib, and most infamously, Jake Paul. And all I wanted to do was give y'all a knockout for Christmas. And for a while, it was great to see him bounce these dudes off the canvas. But after the Tommy Fury fight, the excitement just has not been there, as Jake had now been defeated and his haters had their quench for his failure met. Since then he has beat up on and knocked people out, but there was really no buzz behind those events. Most recently he fought this last weekend, and no one cared or really even knew what was going on in the first place. In his defense, he was the co-main event here, at least he was supposed to be. His friend Amanda Serrano was supposed to be the real main event, seeing that she is from Puerto Rico herself, where the entire thing went down, but she had some sort of issue with her eye at the very last second and had to scratch herself out. So in turn, Jake became the real main event, and in the end, he got the TKO against this dude who looked like he could be your accountant. In all reality, he was a good boxer back in the day. His name is Ryan Borland, and he used to be a gold glove winner. But he's now 35, and has only fought once in the last six years, apparently completely changing his occupation during that time span. Now, before the fight, they had apparently ran this little news story on Ryan Borland. Borland is originally from the Bay Area of California, but decided to come out to North Dakota five years ago to work in the oil industry. I'm happy to get in. I'm taking it really, really serious. He's doing like some oil shit. That shit crazy. That's crazy. I don't like Jake Paul. I love competition he's facing, fighting his own for a name. But he's bragging about he's the best, and he'll beat up everybody. So at all, but the level of competition he's fighting is normal for ninety percent of boxers starting out. Y'all know this, but just hate him so much to admit it. And even in watching the pre-promotion for this fight, looking back, you can see why it pretty much had no hype, and why no one knew about this, because none of these clips went viral at all. Jake brought back the whole gotcha hat bit that he had done to Floyd Mayweather. No love lost here between these two. Cruiserweight fight. Once again, Jake Paul has someone's hat. Y'all know how I feel about hat thievery, taking someone's hat off their head, I just find it to be very disrespectful. You don't touch another man's hat. He even tried to troll him in his name before the event. I have a question, like what is the rhino? Like how did you come up with that nickname? My grandpa gave it to me when I was younger. Awkward, I mean you bring out the grandpa story and it's really all over. Like someone's looking to make fun of you about something and they end up just looking like a serious asshole. Are you vegan like rhinos? No, I was uh, pretty tough and strong as a kid, so my grandpa gave it to me. That's what's up, bro. Congrats. Fire nickname. Do you realize that rhinos are land animals? So yes, the promotional material for this fight was like putting some completely mild salsa on some chips. Just get that shit out of here, it ain't spicy enough. Still, Jake tried to get the crowd hyped. Fuck the rhino! I'm tired of these dumbass rhinos walking around this month. In Ireland. Tomorrow, the rhinos are going extinct. I mean, Jake Paul might be the first influencer to get CTE. And like I said, this thing was over before it started. The entire fight would last around two and a half minutes, with Jake getting the win at the end of the first round. Like, it might have looked like he dominated him on paper because the guy wasn't really punching back, but he was pretty much an immobile target, and Jake was still missing a lot of his punches. Here's an alternate angle of the end of this fight.
I mean, honestly, the Rhino really had no business going into there in the first place. But shout out to him, man. He went in there, he took the beat down, and he collected what was very likely a very nice check. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't trust this dude in like a bar fight, but if you show up to fight someone who has been training for the last six years, who is 10 years younger than you, you're probably gonna get the beats. Some people commented how in the post-fight interview, Jake sounded pretty fucked up. Yeah, man, you know, I just uh, like to meditate and breathe. Realistically, nothing can stop me here, not even, not even a rhino. I mean, he looks like he's about ready to give that man Ariel a smooch on the lips. And honestly, if anyone truly has CTE here, it might be this guy, Ryan. I'll be rooting for you the rest Thank of your career, you, man. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. We'll be rooting for you too, bro. Hey, we'll bring, Congrats, man. bring in for training for his next fight, huh? Hey, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Appreciate good job, you, my man. man. Yeah. Yeah. And shout out to this man, Rhino, bro. He really does seem like a good guy. Of course, Dylan Dan has had to step in to try and give his two cents. He says there's someone in Puerto Rico right now wondering why their Uber driver is taking so long. Beef with Jake now. He says, I can't take this shit no more. Been spiraling for the greater part of the last year. Ever that worked the way up, but more importantly, he's conning the fans. And here's where things start to go a bit off the rails. You have Ryan Garcia, who has already been spiraling for the greater part of the last year ever since he lost to Tank Davis. A lot of people suspect that this man is now using, if you know what I mean, and I'm not talking about steroids. He's on that Oscar De La Hoya treatment, and he's trying to start beef with Jake now. He says, I can't take this shit no more. And then he even left him like a little voicemail. I can't. I can't do this shit. I feel so f***ing bad for introducing Jake Paul to boxing. I f***ed up. I can't allow this to happen. I can't. I can't. He's disrespecting my sport. He's disrespecting everything. I just, I don't know. Call my team, Jake. Fuck you. And a lot of people were surprised to hear this statement coming from him. I mean, the guy has been posting some pretty deranged shit onto social media the last couple of months. Like, I'm pretty sure he got divorced one day after his wife gave birth, but regardless, him and Jake used yeah, to be really buddy-buddy, and now he's putting this message out to the world like, yeah, f*** you. And this was Jake's response to that voice memo. He's doing off some cocaina. <laughs> <laughs> that boy is getting that shit straight from Colombia or something. Brian, I love you, you know that, bro, but you gotta chill out, bro, because, like, there's a line, and people, you, you just seem like you're losing your mind and acting thirsty and desperate and saying you're a billionaire when you had one money fight. If you do want to fight, that's, to me, light work. You got no footwork, and as long as you've been in the game, I'm a better boxer than you. Now, I will say, that would probably be one fight that would actually draw a lot of interest if Jake Paul could actually fight Ryan Garcia. That would be something that a lot of people would tune into. And apparently they even FaceTime during this post-fight press conference. What's up? What you gotta say? Fuck you. you, bitch. I'll beat your ass. You know that. It's already being recorded, bro. You know how we do it. You lightweight. You lightweight. You're, I thought you had baby mamas to suck your dick. I thought you had all those baby mamas to suck your dick. You little, bro. That's you got no balls. To no balls. No balls. I'm gonna put you back on the canvas like Tank did. I wouldn't be surprised if you put your balls on the internet right now, brother. You're losing it. I mean, hey guys, when Jake Paul, of all people, is out here cooking you, you must be in a pretty bad place in life. I mean, in general, Ryan Garcia really does need to chill out. I'm thinking about making a video on him and all of his very strange social media postings and interviews he's done recently in the next couple of days. So y'all let me know if y'all are interested in that. But it does seem like the dude could be on the verge of pulling a Oscar De La Hoya, only with like a very small amount of the success that Oscar ever had. And of course, you have people out there who think this has all just been building for a very long time as old clips like this have resurfaced and people have suspected that the two men are just basically in on it together sign the contract Bro. No, no, contract. sign the contract. Oscar's your daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oscar's your I'm daddy. Your daddy. I'm yeah, your daddy. Yeah, Oscar's your daddy. And I'm your daddy. Yeah, talk to Oscar, bro. I'm your daddy. Either way, the point in this video is that the whole influencer boxing scene to me is basically dying down by the day. 
I mean, there is some fights out there with some juice left in them. Like if he was to fight KSI or if he was to fight Ryan Garcia or probably several other guys, he could probably get those pay-per-view buys back up. But until he once again fights someone where there's actually a... Yeah. Yeah, he, I, I guess he's going to be facing uh, Mike Tyson. Um, yeah, I think, I think the next person, yeah, Mike Tyson. He's going to be facing Mike Tyson in this next match. Uh, let, me, let me delete this shit. Yeah. I don't know if someone's ever made me eat my words so fast. I mean, I just made my video on how the last couple of Jake Paul fights have drawn little to no interest because Jake has essentially been out here fighting absolute nobodies who are far the past elderly. their prime. Yeah. And while he did knock one of them out cold and he finished the other one within the first round, people yeah. really did not care and it seemed like he was drawing less and less interest with every single fight. Now in my defense, in that video I did say that Jake might have some juice left in the entertainment tank, but that he was going to have to go back to fighting people with much- No funny, him and Mike Tyson might pull money, uh, money, get a lot of money, but I do think it's, it's kind of fucked up because Mike Tyson has already achieved greatness. And it's been decades since he's been in his prime. It's been a lot of years, so. Yeah, it's almost like he's cheating. Much higher social profiles. I was predicting KSI, maybe Ryan Garcia. Bro, how does boxing make so much money? Do we ever ask ourselves that question? Like, how? What oh, other yeah. sport, what other 1v1 sport makes as much money as boxing? I can't think of it. Pay-per-view. Okay, WWE and UFC also have pay-per-view, but those don't work in the same way. Feel me? Like you're kind of an employee to the company almost. You feel me? And they'd be sending you your pay based on residuals. It'd be a whole bunch of Mickey. Yeah, yeah, it is. He's right. What are your chat? What's a very popular 1v1 PPV sport? Tennis? What's oh. a very popular 1v1 PVP? Tennis? Oh my God, tennis is pay-per-view? How come tennis players don't make boxer money? Is it just the overall interest in the sport? Yeah, like the really. eyes? UFC, but UFC is, is like, they're like contractors. Them niggas get slave wages compared to boxers, bro. It's not, is it's UFC pay is way worse than uh, a boxer pay. F1, bro, F1 is not PPV, is it? Golf? Bro, shit, I got to really diversify my fucking sport portfolio. I don't know shit. But with him now fighting the man who is arguably the most recognizable boxer on planet Earth right now, this will definitely drum up tennis players make 50 mil plus bro. They might make more than 50 mil on this fight. They probably will both of them. That's what I'm saying. The amount they make in boxing is so unreal. A lot of interest. I don't care if there is some 30 year age gap. I mean, you got a guy that was on Disney Channel stepping into the ring with an absolute killer. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Yeah. Praise be to Allah. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something a lot of people yeah. are going to want to see whether you like Jake or not. This was just some of the initial reaction. Jake Paul's a good boxer and Mike's obviously not in his prime anymore. Oh, you don't say. But if Mike loses or this is a tie, then we absolutely know for sure that this is faked or at least staged. I mean, I'm predicting right now that no one's going to get knocked out in this fight. I don't okay. Yeah, a, you realize Mike is almost 60. You know, that dude is, if he loses, probably because of his age, you know. It don't have to be fake. I don't think so. And Jake Paul already showed he can knock a nigga out, so. Okay, all right, look, I'm, I'm a skeptical nigga, bro. I really am. But what's the odds he's faking all his fights, bro? Like, in, especially in a sport where, like, a split second, like, you slow down the frames, put in slow motion, you can catch it. Like, what are the odds? Is it easy to fake boxing? I feel like it'd be incredibly hard. Yeah, it's How the fuck do you mimic a real knockout? You're unconscious. You don't know what it's like to genuinely, literally fall head first. I just feel like that's way... Y'all giving this nigga way too much credit. And if, honestly, if this shit is fake, then the nigga need to be in Hollywood ASAP. <laughs> Put that nigga in Creed 5, bro. I used to do that back in the day. Like, I used to hear stories like, 
like the mafia and shit used to like, niggas and be like, oh, you gonna you gonna lose this round or you gonna get knocked out here and all that. Oh, they pay like the ref. You know, like niggas been cheating forever, bro. I don't know if there will be a no knockout clause in the contract, but I just can't really see that happening. I mean, you got this guy who's really mad. He says, I said it once and I'll say it again. Jake Paul claiming to be a boxer while preying on retired combat sports. Sports athletes who have sustained careers worth of injuries is one of the most utterly pathetic displays of cowardice I've ever seen in my entire life. Mike Tyson is 57 years old. Stop encouraging this clown. You're a joke. Netflix, you're also a joke for promoting this as well. Bro, okay, bro. Really, it's the most cowardice display you've seen in your life? Yeah, really. There's been other cowardice stuff. Seriously, bro? Are you guys just saying yes? I could actually think of many real... Never mind, let's not even like, take him. Like what? Let's just assume he's being hyperbolic. But you guys are agreeing with him. Almost like you're not taking it hyperbolically, like you're literally taking it literally. Are you saying this is literally your opinion, guys? It's cowardly, but I don't, I don't know if that's the most cowardly. Yes, got you. I mean, everyone he's fight has had to agree to get into that ring. And you know what their encouragement is? The money, baby. I mean, hey, if someone wants to toss me a cool million, they can knock me the f*** out. I'll happily lay my head on all the money that night. And at the end of the day, dude, it's really all entertainment. Like I said, the f***er was on Disney Channel. It's not like he was some trained athlete. And I think this is the most... <laughs> like I said, the f***er was on Disney Channel. It's not like... That Olivia Rodrigo. Yo, that's Olivia. All three of my stars, bro. Like he was some trained athlete. And I think this is the most reasonable response to this announcement. I hate myself that I'm going to watch this. Because anything with Jake Paul is almost like passing by a car accident. You don't want to watch, but you can't really take your eyes off of it. I also thought this was hilarious. People were predicting this is how the fight was going to go. Now, if this was back in the day, I mean, Mike Tyson might catch a murder charge. Like, let's say it was a celebrity back in the day, and he wanted to fight Mike. Oh, I think he would have made a That's point to knock the f That's Mark Wahlberg, right? I don't like him. ...out of him. And here is the official head-to-head. -head. You guys can see that beautiful 30-year age gap. <laughs> Jake's got the 9-1 record against a bunch of milkmen and plumbers, while Tyson has the 50-6 and six against some of the greatest fighters of all time. I mean, 50 wins and 44 <laughs> knockouts is f***ing insane. You know, I'm a little bit too young to have witnessed Tyson in his prime, but my parents always tell me stories about, oh, you know, we bought the pay-per-view, we had the whole family over, everyone stayed up all night to watch the main Slept event, in, and then you better mom. not get up and go to the bathroom, because that shit was over in 12 seconds when Mike was around. And obviously, Mike is not going to be no pushover. This guy still looks insane in his training footage. I'm not gonna lie, that trainer fighting for his life right now. <laughs> I mean, this is a damn that near 60 year old man <laughs> with insane <laughs> movement. That was four years ago? I know. I think it was three years ago. I've seen this clip before his last fight. It's probably when he was gonna fight that Roy Jones. I think so. I mean, I won't lie to you guys. If Mike Tyson walked through my door right now and hit me with one of these combinations, I would die. He would send me into the TV and there would be no more tan Superman. There's just a look at the official event poster. And this is kind of... I'm gonna be honest. That's a tough fight, bro. I, I, I think that Jake probably got shafted in the negotiations because Mike... Tyson just has so much leverage, and Jake is coming off a couple pretty mid fights. But regardless, this is going to be great for Jake's career. Because if he loses, what's everyone going to say? They probably laugh at him, but we don't expect really the nigga like to win. Paul. Feel me? Even though Mike Tyson's really 57. Like and if he wins, Paul. nigga's going to say, he's 57. <laughs> so this is a win win situation for Jake. I assume Mike is going to fucking run off with the bag of all bags. And uh, so, Mike, I mean, Jake gets his reputation. 
a little bit. It's more hype in the boxing sphere. He's been losing a little bit. And Mike runs off with the biggest bag maybe of his life, bro. Let's be honest, my nigga. Like, he's had some big fights, but the money in boxing right now, bro, niggas is leaving with 100 mil on high-profile fights, dog. So, I mean, hey, man. That's an easy bag, bro. I mean, the Mike easiest of bags for Mike. Like, like literally, bro. Like, of a groundbreaking event with it being live on Netflix. I don't know if they've ever hosted oh, a boxing tough. match. I mean, as you that's guys can tough. see, per the Jake Paul that's announcement, so they have 260 million that. people using Netflix right now. Apparently including 500 million homes. Mike Tyson apparently has talked oh, about the prospect tough. of fighting Jake what? Paul in the Netflix past. Getting into Jake now? Paul is obviously... You know, he's big. beautiful. My kid, my, my family loves Jace Paul. Could you f him up? Oh, I'm so f easy. I would never. <laughs> I believe it's my family. Everybody loves this little white mother. When you see a white boy with balls, you know, f I'm talking about from real, but like, f you, mother. F I mean, Mike, I would say that 99% of people out there are rooting for you to get the knockout, for you to bounce this man's head off the canvas once and for all. Of course, the KSI fans came out the woodwork to try and discredit this bout. Saying two years ago, Mike Tyson was using a cane to walk. Jake Paul should be ashamed. Yeah. How you doing, Mike? Good to see you, brother. You look at Maybe he just got like a surgery or something. That nigga's so nosy. God damn. Maybe he got like, he just came off like a fucking surgery. The nigga 57, he been an athlete his whole life. His body's fucked up. That's why Jake Paul shouldn't be fighting at that age. Good, Mike. Nah, he limping. He also he's, he's posted limping. up this new story sure. saying, "Ain't no way Jake Paul fighting Mike Tyson, man." Mike nah, Tyson is pitching in a wheelchair. They making this nigga out to be disabled, bro. He's not. This is Mike Tyson. He's not disabled. Damn. He's he's beat up and old. Damn, old and weathered, but he's Mike Tyson. Oh my God, bro! Look, can we stop shitting on Mike Tyson Mike. just because you hate Jake Paul? That's so Mike Tyson is pictured in a wheelchair at Miami Airport raising new fears for his health amid problems with sciatica just weeks after he morbidly claimed his death is really soon at 56 years old. So fucking corny. Here at the Miami Airport raising new fears for his health amid problems with sciatica. Just weeks after he morbidly claims his death is coming real soon at age 56. I mean, you already know how I feel about KSI. I don't really think the guy has any morals. I kind of see him almost as a darker shaded Logan Paul. And the funniest part about this to me is if KSI came out and announced that he was fighting Mike Tyson, the guy who runs this Twitter page would probably jerk himself off to the news that night. <laughs> I mean, seriously, though, if you are over the age of 13 and you're running a fan account for another man, it's time to reevaluate your entire life. I mean, keep in mind, at one point, KSI was lined up to fight this 40-year-old man right here who had a 3-20 and record. Oh my god. And instead, KSI ended up boxing this guy, and here's how the fight ended. Right here, I think. Right to the body. Right here, the right hook. Oh, this is the guy here. Elbow. An elbow to the f***ing jaw. Right here, the right hook. Oh! Now, to be fair to KSI, at this point in the match, he was absolutely whooping this guy's ass. But he has still failed to acknowledge his elbow altogether. And he runs around acting like he's the biggest, baddest guy in town. I thought they were, I was getting up slowly because I thought... Bro, okay, look, he doesn't adjust the elbow. Like, to be fair, they, like, the side men make fun of him all the time in the videos for it. So, like, he just knows it's, like, an ongoing thing now. But aren't you supposed to believe you're the baddest motherfucker? Like, are you going to step in a boxing ring thinking, like, there's there's angrier people than you? Like, there's stronger? I mean, you there's one thing to always believe and have that confidence, but you can't be claiming you the baddest and then all you fighting is old men or retired people. You should be fighting the best of the best if you believe you're the best, you know? It's just what it is. You can't then be like, oh, why are you guys saying I'm not? I shouldn't be confident. You're confident. You're truly confident. And you should face other people who who can test your confidence. You know, you shouldn't be fighting like elderly people. And you shouldn't be el elbowing people in the face. And that's against the rules because then you just cheat it. You, you could die in that ring. If you go in there thinking this shit is... You have to go in there thinking you're going to fuck that nigga up. You have to believe these things about yourself. Oh, just don't even bother going in there. It's not one of them sports like basketball where you, you might get your ankles took, nigga might drop 40 on you. No, you could lose your life in there. 
If you don't go in there with the I'm gonna fucking destroy this motherfucker mentality, I don't know. Bro, fighters, we probably got some niggas that do MMA in here or boxing too. Bro, when y'all go into the ring, what type of what type of mindset do you go in there? You be thinking like, good match, good match. Hopefully you do well, I do well, and we have a good time. Is that how y'all go in? They're counting because it was a clear, I felt the elbow. I saw the punch go past my face and it hits me with an elbow. Horny. What punch was it exactly? Like? It was a left it was a right, right hand. hand. Okay, right if you're not a fighter, it stop answering, bro. It's gone, it's gone viral, it's everywhere. Literally, I felt bone. Like, he, he should be disqualified. That should go down as a loss. You can't walk up to someone in boxing and elbow them. It's not Muay Thai, it's not MMA. So that's how he felt about getting elbowed in his jaw. Someone said watching Jake He's Paul right. do a Fortnite dance over an unconscious 60-year-old Mike Tyson. <laughs> nah, man, it can't go down like that. That cannot happen. It's in the contract. I don't think Jake Paul could check his chin either way, but... Either way, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in this situation. You Jake Paul fanboys came for me quick. You said, oh, your video aged like milk. Where's the update? Well, here it is, guys, and I want to know what you think down below. Are you going to be hate watching this? Do you think it's about as real as the WWE? I mean, I just see it as yet yeah, another piece of good entertainment, to be honest. That's it's really like good. watching that train wreck that's love really is That's a really good point, chat. If it was so easy for Jake to fake these fights, bro, then why would the WWE? The WWE looks really fake. I mean, if you ever been to a fight, chat, like when they're not switching angles and shit like that with the cameras, bro, you could tell they're fake fighting. But they're actually getting hurt, like it's real damage and shit like that. But you could tell it's scripted. Those are the best in the world at what they do, right? So why do you think Jake can even more expertly pull it off in slow motion with the big lights in a stadium? Literally, go to a WWE fight. The first thing you realize is, damn, this shit looks way realer on camera. But you know it's not real and you're just there for the story and for the spectacle and the entertainment so it doesn't matter. And those are the best in the world. Fine, you got girls out here calling themselves Megan Fox, gay guys out here gaslighting women, it's crazy. Netflix on some other shit. But either way, y'all know it's been your boy the Tan Superman, and some other boxing news out here needs to be covered, so I'm out. Peace. Uh, boxing news. Yo chat, is the wave of influencer boxing fucking cooked uh, or not? Nah? Uh, okay. Uh, what's this bro? Um...